Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got the brand new Hammerhead Crew 2. This is just like the Crew 1, except it didn't eat five boxes of Twinkies. So it's a lot smaller, it's sleeker, it's, it's all the things you want. Yes, even the beeper is there. Now, of course, Hammerhead announced the Crew 2, or like pre-announced the announcement of the Crew 2 back this past May or June or something like that. And they've kind of teased a few things, but this is the first time you're going to see hands-on exactly what the Crew 2 really is. Now, I've been running it for a few weeks now. In fact, only one person noticed on my Strava activity uploads that it's clearly said Hammerhead Crew 2. Uh, and overall, it's going pretty darn well. A lot of what you see in the Crew 2 is the same software as the Crew 1. In fact, these two pieces of software from my Crew 1 to my Crew 2 are identical at this point in time. There is no differences. They've taken the Wahoo approach of saying, if the hardware can run it here, they'll update the software to match that. Now that will change down the road, and it'll change in a few months and I'll explain that. Um, but for right now, these two are, are identical and will remain identical as long as the hardware is able to do the features um, on both of them, which is again, the same approach we've seen Wahoo take and Apple take as well. But looking at the hardware, there are some notable differences. Uh, first off is the charging port. You'll see the Crew 2 here has USB-C, the Crew 1 has micro USB, I appreciate that. The Crew 2, they say can charge up to 30% uh, total capacity in 30 minutes using fast charging on USB-C, which is great. On the display itself, it is a high resolution display. Uh, so the Crew 1 over here is 480 by 640. On the Crew 2, it's 480 by 800. This makes the pixels per inch count on the Crew 1 at 229 versus 292 over on the Crew 2. So definitely an increase there as well. Uh, from a weight standpoint, this loses a lot of weight as well. So this is at 186 grams according to them and 122 grams uh, for the Crew 2. So a pretty significant drop there. They've also dropped the bracket weight as well and then completely read on the mount. In fact, if you flip it over on both of them, uh, you'll notice the biggest difference. This has the old, old I say, uh, Garmin quarter turn mount, but it's the mount that like every third party company uses. And so you want compatibility there. This, this one does not. This one has this funky little like V-shaped mount sort of thing, um, but don't fret yet. So here is my bike with their mount. I don't really know how else to show you this. I didn't really think this was part of the demo, but I'll put some B-roll here in a second. Anyways, you take this, uh, you slide it in like this, and then it just locks in place and it's a lot less churn, which is more ideal for like TT bike setups and things like that, where you might not have a lot of room. It also allows you to get closer to the handlebars because you don't have, to have as much rotation. Uh, then to pull it out, you just simply take it and out it goes. Uh, now this is sort of like a 3D printed mount, so it's not quite perfect yet. Now, what if you're like me who have a gazillion Garmer mounts sitting around here, or bikes with actual built-in Garmer mounts? Fear not, they have an adapter. So the, where'd my adapter go? Oh, hey, and a quick note before I forget, if you are finding this video interesting or useful or something like that, simply whack that like button at the bottom there. It really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, I found the adapter, which is probably exactly how you'll feel after a while as well. So here's the adapter. It comes in the box, flip it over, and you'll see it slides in just like this and it works just fine. I've done an equal number of rides with the adapter, which again, this is a 3D printed prototype adapter, so it is what it is, but it's been just fine for me uh, on rides there, as well as their mount, which has also been just fine for me. Uh, so in their case, they say their mount is a little bit more sleek than the Garmin out front mount, if you buy Garmin's in-box out front mount, the one that comes in the box, which isn't a hard bar to reach because Garmin's included out front mount is like the hammerhead Twinkie of mounts. It's just a gigantic monstrosity. So I could see that being a pretty easy bar to achieve. I think if you're like me, who has maybe like a cage mount or a uh, Tate Labs or Barfly mount, it's probably a wash all in. Now, things that are not a wash is storage. The Crew 2 has 32 gigs of storage. The Crew 1 has 16 gigs of storage on there. Uh, so about 30 gigs of usable space on the Crew 2 versus eight and a half gigs of usable space on the Crew 1. So pretty substantial difference. You can download all the maps in the world that you want to to the Crew 2, just like the Crew 1. Moving through a bit more hardware, uh, both of these support of AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart in the past. However, the Crew 2 technically has two Bluetooth Smart chipsets in there. Uh, one for all the normal normal bike computer stuff, and then one for connecting to your phone. Because the Crew 1 never could connect to your phone. You can never get smartphone notifications on it. And as of today, the Crew 2 can't either, but it's supposed to by launch. It's supposed to by time you get units, you should be able to pair this to your smartphone. Uh, and the terminology they used was industry leading smartphone notifications or something like that, basically saying that uh, there are gonna be the best smartphone notifications on your bike computer. I haven't seen any of that yet. 
So I can't say there. Though they seem way more confident now. They seem like they know the path between point A and point B to get there. So hopefully they can route their way there. I couldn't, how could I not say that joke? I mean, it's a routing computer. Um, also upgraded is the fact that there is improved cellular connectivity. So the Crew 1 had a 2G and 3G chipset capable stuff in there. And this one has 2G, 3G, and 4G capable um, across the board, but you still need to put your own SIM card in there. Also improved is GPS chipset. So Crew 1 was GPS plus GLONASS. Crew 2, GPS plus GLONASS plus Galileo. So pretty standard stuff that we see across the board. And then last but not least, the beeper. Uh, now, I don't have a great way of demonstrating the beeper to you. It's sitting at this table. So we're gonna have to cut to some audio of it. Uh, and right now, there's a beeper. It's plausible you didn't hear it. Uh, because in the prototype device that I have, in the first generation of prototypes, the beeper was accidentally placed too close to the case. And when it did that, people can't hear the beeper. It literally sounds like one of those ear tests that you, you know, you listen to the doctor and you go, yes, I could hear that, you can't hear that, that sort of thing, precisely like that. As my first ride going on the road, I'm like, what is that strange sound? That was the beeper. They say not to worry, it's gonna be fixed, it will be beepalicious or something by time the final edition hits, uh, but that's all I've got for you for the beeper right now. Okay, now before we talk the user interface, let me just do a quick size comparison for you here. This is the Crew uh, 1 over here, obviously, and the Crew 2 on this side. You can see that. You can see how much thinner it is. Uh, and then if we add in here, we've got the Wahoo Roam right there. I'll just move this off the side. We know the Crew 2 is big. Like, there's no real, no real thinking on that one. There's the Wahoo Roam. There's the Stages L50. This is the Garmin Edge uh, 830. What else we got over here? We've got... That's the Sigma Rox 12, you know, a bit of pretty much, I think, the exact same display is my guess here. Almost um, the same display in the inset there, but uh, just, you know, a bit of a taller, also a bit thinner though as well. So um, that's that. But, uh, you know, in terms of thickness, this is thicker than uh, the Garmin Edge 830. Obviously, it's a smaller display. You can see the display inset right there. Uh, these are the same price though. So $399 for the Crew 2, $399 for the 830. The 530 is 299, and then the Wahoo Roam is, I think, 389. So in the same ballpark there, uh, this I think is 299 for the Stages Dash LR, and the Sigma. Uh, Sigma is all over the place on pricing these days because they're not in the U.S. anymore. But just to kind of give you the ballpark on on that there, if you do have a Crew One, by the way, they'll give you $120 trade-in credit for that. So that's kind of cool. You don't see like Garmin or Wahoo doing that. Uh, so that's a, a nice touch there. So with that. Let's talk the user interface, uh, which means I gotta actually grab this guy back here. Uh, so right now I've got the brightness turned way up on this guy. Uh, I found I've had a lot of bright sunny days lately and I've actually needed to be a lot brighter in order to see things. Uh, so I've got the brightness way up there. If I turn up the same brightness here, whoop, um, you'll see, come on, go away. There we go. Uh, it probably yeah, blows up the camera just about the same there. If I bring this back down here, down to like 50% or so, it's totally viewable indoors. So that, there you can see. Uh, what I'm gonna do though to make your life easier is I've been screen recording this entire thing. So that way I wanna put that right there. Uh, so you can see what's going on a little more clarity in case the camera angle is all wonky and stuff. Uh, now, from a crew to software standpoint, as I said earlier, it's identical. That's their intention going forward. I explained all that. Uh, the pieces that are not identical aren't there today. Uh, so none of the phone integration bits, they're not there today yet. Uh, also, they have a new feature coming where you're going to be able to set up your entire bike computer data fields, all that kind of stuff, online on the dashboard after you order it. So you order it on their site, they start the ordering process, and you start setting up your thing. And then once it arrives at your home a few days later, uh, then it's already set up by the time you sync to Wi-Fi. You just connect to Wi-Fi, it sets everything up based on what you set up online. Cool concept. I like that. That's like makes a lot of sense. Uh, so that's coming, but I can't show you that either right now. Okay, so looking at the screen side by side, you'll see they're identical. So if I just tap on routes, for example, uh, you'll see that you know these are essentially the same structures. Uh, this one they're not quite synced yet, so that's why they're not uh, they're showing slightly different there. Uh, but you can see it all looks the same. I can tap on my you know Wednesday lunch ride plan from last week. I can't see things like the altitude profile here and stuff like that. Maybe that's coming. They're saying, but uh, I just with the tap on this. At that point, I will load it up and be ready to start riding. Uh, so you can see it's a little bit slow in some cases, uh, but not too bad. And maybe it'll beep here. I'll see if I'll actually get a beep for the reroute sound. Maybe, eh, it's thinking that's fine. Uh, so it's trying to figure out where I am, uh, but 
I'm going to show you some screens now from out on the ride so you can see that. Uh, and we'll kind of walk through some of those from a voiceover standpoint. Okay, so here we are cruising along this bike path, and you're going to see a turn notification come up right there in yellow. Uh, and it pops up on all the screens. In this case, I happen to be on the map screen, which is fine, but uh, any screen that you're on, it'll overlay that yellow pop up there, and it simply counts down until the turn. Uh, now, what's kind of fun about this is I'm actually turning on to a boat. Well, it's like a paddle boat thing. You, you have to row it yourself across, um, but uh, what's funny, watch in a second here. It, what it says instruction-wise, it kind of goes, wait a second, this is not something I understand. Unknown instruction. Uh, but once I got to the other side, it sorted itself out just fine. Here's another example of turn notifications popping up. Uh, you can see me going around this traffic circle there. The map isn't quite perfect on some of the segments below that, but in terms of like the routing and stuff, it works just out fine. Uh, now cruising back up, you see that turn notification bits goes away. Again, I'm on the map screen there. Uh, now cruising along the river here, we're gonna swipe through some of the different data pages I have there. You'll see it's pretty responsive. Uh, just a swipe left and right, no problems. This is one of the graphical ones, in fact. So you can see my zones, my upcoming elevation, which is flat in the Netherlands, my power. Uh, you can change all these and change the sizing of them within the profile files. So it's all the same flexibility you had on the crew one uh, is there as well. And then just a moment, we're going to come up on one of the first Strava segments. Uh, so you're going to see this will say speed check, which is actually the name of the Strava segment, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so you can see right there, upcoming segment, speed check. And then I'll go ahead and I'll get into that and start that. Uh, and then I'll show you the details of a Strava segment a little bit later on. So you can see it's coming up. And if you look at the map, you can see that orange there, kind of that thicker part. That's the actual segment itself. So now it starts and it starts showing my progress on the bottom. Skipping to a different segment where I was going, frankly, a lot faster. Uh, this is miles per hour up there. So over 40 kilometers an hour, cruise along with a nice tailwind. Uh, and you look down at the bottom, you see it's a little picture of like a wolf icon. It looks like a lion. That's it's technically the wolf, uh, which is the nearest follower you have. And what it's showing you is that your progress towards that. So you can see the wolf icon on the map there. You can see my PR on the map as well. Uh, and I've, in this case, I've slid down the Strava um, overlay. So I've put it down towards the bottom. And you can do that if you want to, or you can bring it back up again. Uh, but you can see on the map there where I am in relation to the calm, which is up ahead of me, uh, my PR, which is behind me. And I can still keep swiping and looking at different screens. You can see, again, swiping through my screens, no problem at all. And I can bring up that uh, Strava progress back graph as well at the bottom. Uh, and then you can see those little icons of uh, how I am competing against my competitors and then how much distance is remaining as well. The bottom there on the left-hand side, you see my distance total. Uh, and on the right-hand side, you see distance remaining. Uh, and you see the time in the middle there. You see how far ahead I am of my PR, which is 17 seconds. Uh, again, I chose like the windiest day in the last couple months. So this is great. Uh, you can see how far behind I am of the current uh, record holder is 62 seconds. Obviously, they were motor pacing, I presume, or something like that. Uh, but uh, it's definitely, I like this. I really like the Strava overlays that they have on the cruise series. This came out this past spring, uh, this particular overlay and it looks really, really nice. The only thing is that it does make that elevation graph look a whole lot bigger than it actually is, uh, just because of the fact that uh, there's completely flat here. And then at the end, you'll see it'll give me uh, my segment complete with a PR nailed, as well as uh, I went ahead and nailed that wolf, which is basically, again, uh, beating one of my nearest uh, friends there. Now, what's cool is you can combine Strava segments with navigation, no problem. You can see this, in fact, upcoming segment, there we are in orange, and then tell me my instructions coming up there down at the bottom in left, or sorry, in red. And now, showing a take left, this is one thing where it's not quite perfect. You see, I'm basically just merging down onto the street from the bike path on the sidewalk there, uh, but so it's really more just staying straight. It's something that Hammerhead says they're going to work on and kind of optimizing some of this stuff. Uh, and then in this case, I'm just off and running the same exact Strava segment information as before, shown down at the bottom there. And of course, I can dismiss this if I want to like it before by swiping down, but uh, I find it's just a really nice looking graph and I really actually like competing on Strava segments on the Hammerhead series, the Crew 1 as well as the Crew 2. Again, a look at some of the navigation here, as well as the GPS accuracy as I go below this whole funky tunnel thing. Uh, and this is really, really clean. It worked out just fine. It is giving me instructions to go straight, which makes sense. I can see how from a GPS standpoint and a navigation standpoint, this would be a pretty confusing intersection as the bike path goes below the entire like highway overpass thingamajig. Uh, but it's super clean. Like There's no issues there in terms of navigation. It just did exactly what I expected it to do. And finally, this case right here, uh, what you've got is a case where I went off-road, or off-route, if you will. So you can see that blue line on the left-hand side. That that is my new route. The orange or reddish line to the right-hand side is where I was supposed to be going. Uh, and so it's rerouting me back to my route. Uh, it's a little bit hard to see because I have so much blue for water. It's something I talked to them about. Uh, but you can see it is rerouting me correctly. It's telling me to turn left and turn right uh, as it goes through these streets right here. Uh, and so that is you know, doing the rerouting as I would expect in true turn-by-turn -turn navigation, uh, something to kind of differentiate, even when I ignore it, as I did just there.
Okay, so there you go, a complete hands-on look at the Crew 2. Uh, hopefully this answered a bunch of your questions. Again, this is not a full in-depth review uh, because it's not final. The hardware's not final, the mount's not final, the software's not final, it's not shipping to you yet. Once all those things happen, I'll swing back by for a full in-depth review. Again, sometime this follows what they're saying, so I'll just call it the same there. With that, thanks for watching. Hope you found this interesting. If so, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button. There is plenty more sports technology goodness coming this week, especially today, especially for that matter. Today is not done yet. We've got like another 12 hours on today based on my embargo timing lift up thingamajiggy here. So uh, hold on, should be a fun ride.